Hi everyone. I wanted to start today by showing you my setup. To start with, on this little photo easel, I have a bunch of sizes of pre-cut watercolor papers that I have cut from 9 by 12 or 8 by 10 watercolor paper pads. That's just to keep things really handy and easy. I always keep that on my table. That way if I mess something up completely, I have another card to go to. I keep a washcloth at my table for dabbing mistakes, um, areas that have gotten too much water, etc. I have my palette and today's watercolors, I'll be using my St. Petersburg Classics. These are the full pans, which I really like because I can put my entire brush, the bristles, in there. I keep a water and an additional jar of water for rinsing my dirty brush and then I use the clean water for dipping and then going into my paint and paper also for washes of just water. I have my pre-cut 4x4 and I've already penciled in a little picture and I did that because I cannot paint this picture freehand without a drawing to save my life. So I went ahead and sketched a little picture in there. I don't know if you can see that. And today's watercolor paper is this $3 pad of watercolor paper from Dollar Tree. I love this paper. I know there are some reviews that say it's not very good, but I'm not a I'm not a paper snob and that is not to knock anybody who really cares about good archival paper, arches, etc. It's just that I know I'm a beginner and learning and uh, let's face it, I just don't want to fork over the dough for um, something I really may throw into the trash. But uh, these are 8x10 and I have this pre-cut 4x4 from this and so what I did was I actually per sheet I cut two 4x6's and the remainders were two 4x4's and uh, and so that just works out great I get two 4x6's and two 4x4's and then as for my brushes I have a size 6 and a size 3 intuition brush from Artigria so let's get started Okay, so to start today, I really want to wet some of this background, and what I want to do is I want to leave this picture the color of the paper. I want to drop in pigment all around it, but I want to leave the picture kind of a white. And one of the reasons I love this paper so much is because it has this beautiful creamy tone to it. It's just, it's really, really pretty. I don't know whether that comes across on the tutorial or not, um, but it's just, it's so pretty. And, um, and I feel like it really makes this beautiful white milk glass or or milk pitcher when when I simply bring pigment all around it so I love that I also like that it allows it's a very thirsty paper so I'm going to start with my raw sienna because it's a nice warm tone and it's really almost on here it's barely more than an off-white and that's kind of heavy, so let's see if I can just kind of dilute that a bit. And I tend to not be too worried about most of this painting, but around the picture, I do want that pretty precise. So just kind of brush that out a bit. And then I want to bring this all the way around. So 
just getting this all blended and and I'll take a little bit more of this raw sienna and go underneath this picture. I want to keep a nice loose shadow here and a bit more right in the top. Okay, so now that that background is finished and I'm really happy with it, I'm going to start with some of my some of my leaves. And I'm doing the leaves first, these stems and leaves, just because I want some loose I want some loose background that's just kind of uh expanding and bleeding out <laughs> bleeding out always sounds terrible um but just spreading from the pigment that I'm dropping in and uh the best way to do that is on this wet paper so just some little whimsical things and I think I'd like for my painting to have a bit more on this side I don't think it would matter but I I kind of like to offset my florals a little bit or to have them a a little bit unbalanced I guess I'm not sure but but I like that I just feel like it's uh, it's a little more of the style I would like in a in an arrangement and whatnot so just taking a bit of this leftover pigment on my brush and and just making some various background strokes just some nice swift easy little little things I like this right here to me it almost looks like kind of um, some sort of fern type greenery or lacy scalloped vegetation and and I really like how that turned out and uh, so what I want to do today is I want to fill this with some maybe some geranium type florals so I'm taking my red and this is this is just red from St. Petersburg Classics and I'm going to just dot now see I have so much that's wet here so I'm going to be very careful because I really do not I don't want this all spreading together but you know how geraniums have those they have kind of these individual flowers on on these kind of leggy stems so I like that I have three clusters of these flowers I could go in and this could be kind of in the background And I'll just kind of wet these, the places where the paper was a little too dry. I'm just going to go in and dot around these dots of pigment. Just a tiny bit of water on the tip of my brush and I'm just dotting that in so that the pigment just kind of spreads a little. And I like that. Those are cute. And I feel like geraniums are very forgiving. This is a flower that, you know, you can just play with and and they really are so playful. So I feel like uh, they don't have to be very precise. I feel like it's very easy to get the feel of them. And in an abstract sense, they really come together so beautifully. So you see how this paper just reacts so well. It gives a nice 
I would say maybe almost a vintage kind of feel and I really love that so I may come back to some of that and what I want to do now is some yellow flowers in here so here I'm taking my yellow deep and I'm not sure if I want I think I may do two of these kind of right here and maybe one more out here and I'm just dotting in these are who knows the idea is kind of like a lupine some kind of uh, flower that grows up kind of to a point sort of love that and then I'll go in again just going in with some clean water and I have a smaller brush and I actually could use that and actually I am going to switch to that this is my size 3 round and it just holds a little bit less I'm being very careful see how this has a drop of I don't know if you can see it we're not really at a good angle but it has a drop of water up on the ferrule and and so I was careful to brush that off there because I really do not want that water to drip down into this it will just create a pool of of spreading out pigment and that is not what I want I do want to retain some of these individual little petals so I'm just going in very lightly and I'm just touching around and just right up to some of these little dots here and not every dot because I want to retain some of the deeper little petals there so just some of them do what you like this is not for me anyway I'm not really trying to create something that is necessarily um, science book worthy I'm not going for the most botanical accuracy if it looks like a certain flower that's great if it reminds you of a certain flower that's even better but I just feel like you know the idea of what's going on here is is what I'm going for so now I want some little scallopy um, leaves for these geraniums and the way I do that is I just take my brush and I just kind of scallop around there and I'm not worried if I get a little bit of bleed in those I that doesn't worry me now I am watching it because I don't want that to happen too much I don't want to lose too much of my petals or my leaves either way that will not be good I'm just creating these little scallops you can do it by angling your brush but I think that looks very nice Okay, and this color I did not mention is green cane. Leaf placement is always very difficult for me. I just, it's, it's not necessarily intuitive. And in fact, if I'm trying to just do what I feel, I will tend to have things well for me they feel like they go a bit awry <laughs> it goes a bit sideways for me so 
Um, so I do kind of have to think about it. I, I just am not very intuitive with the leaves and, uh, you know, good or bad, just it is what it is. There are some artists that I watch and I think, wow, they just, they just know. And I think that's something that comes, it's like muscle memory. It just kind of comes as you go, maybe. So these geranium leaves, I feel like they have a little bit of yellow inside. So I'm just going in and trying not to have a bunch of water on my brush. But I'm going in with that same yellow deep. And I'm just going to add it in and let it bleed. Just let that bleed together with the green however it wants to. And I don't want to overdo those geranium leaves, whether that's good or bad. And up here, I did end up with a little extra bleed onto that geranium, and so I'm dabbing that away. And I'm going to go back as these are drying and just add some little, some little deeper petals. That sometimes happens when you're dabbing in water to kind of make a loose flower sometimes some of the detail gets lost and that's okay and you know you can you can do something about it if you like if you feel like you've lost a little too much and if you like the way the colors are blending together, then just leave it. It's art is subjective and there's no right or wrong. So just leave it how you like it. And don't worry about what the right way is or what you think other people expect or want. Because really, this is for you. Okay, so I like those. I'm really happy with those. I want to take a little, I kind of want a little bit of brown in my green there for these, but I still have a little bit of wet here. So I'm, I'm waiting on those to get just a little bit drier. I think I'll work some more on some leaves. I just want to a few more things that are a little more defined. So I'm taking my green cane. I just want to make some little leaves. Let these overlap. I am glad I switched for this smaller brush and now I'm going to go in with my olive because I think we need a bit more of this more yellow green in here this is a bit heavy with that green cane and I'm I could do this deeper but I'm in a deeper shade but I really uh well, I was hoping that would be a bit lighter. <laughs> I thought it would be. But I want a bit of just some lighter tones. My goodness, I cannot do it. Okay, I just want to put a little bit of detail in this. And this back here. And I feel like this might be a little much, so I'm just gonna kind of dot that out. Okay. Okay, just some little light 
leaves in there. Okay, I like that. One of the things that I'm learning, and, and it has been a struggle for me, is how to create something that you want to look through. And one of the ways to do that is for a flower arrangement to create something that is very asymmetrical. Things that, that kind of lean over and flow out from one side rather than just every direction. And that's not the easiest thing for me to do. I've learned. I, sometimes my brush just gets away from me and I notice that I'm just, I'm painting this, this thing that is completely balanced and I'm going matchy-matchy from one side to another. So I admire when when people do not struggle as much with that, but I definitely do. I have to really think about being less balanced, which is funny. Maybe some would say I'm not very balanced, but that's a joke. Okay, so I like that. I like these little... Uh, these little leaves that just kind of go here and there. I'm actually really happy with that. And I, I may just say that that is done. Kind of looks done to me. Just very simple. I need to do the inside of this handle. And then really, that's that's it. Maybe a touch more shadow beneath the picture. And I don't think we need quite that much pigment inside the handle. because it's it's not really going to be darker. So I'm just taking my brush, dabbing it off on my washcloth, and then pulling some of that pigment out. Okay, now I want to just use the same background color for a bit more shadow beneath this picture. I'm going to keep this very tight to the picture and then that's going to be it. I'm not really going to do very much here at all. I like it. One last thing that I think this maybe needs is just and just a tiny bit here and there making sure my brush is not drippy at all, but this needs a few little stems inside the geraniums. They tend to have that. They kind of have all these little pieces going and they go in these different directions. So I like that very much. And I'm seeing one last thing that I do want to deal with. I lost a bit of this, this geranium right here in some bleeding and I was waiting for it to dry so I'm just adding a few more of these petals back in and these two I just want some that are still they still have some detail some depth so that it's not just all flat and and one tone These I feel like I, when I went back into those petals 
and then just wet them a tiny bit. That really kind of stayed, so I like that. These, in order to not get quite so much of the water, because I really, I don't want these to just bleed out, I'm just getting the tip of my brush wet, and then I actually, a second ago, I, I dabbed it off, I blotted it on my washcloth. Okay, and here it is all finished. I went back in and added a few more geraniums or hint of geraniums where I thought they would kind of peek through the background or from the background. And, uh, and so I just did those the same way that I did these others, but I left them a little bit looser. I also did not make them complete flowers. You can see they're peeking from either side of, of greenery. And so I just thought it needed that little touch right there. And maybe over here, I think I did something right there a bit. But anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. I hope you'll try it. Let me know if you try it and whether you enjoy it. And as always, happy painting.